Hi, my name is Gary Carlsrud. I'm from Steinberg, and we're here at the SAE, Institute of Technology, in New York City. And we're here to show a brand new version of Cubase Pro 8. It's the latest version of Cubase from Steinberg. Cubase is the leading digital audio workstation product in the world. However, here in the United States, people are still getting introduced to it, a little bit new for some people. It's the only application out there that actually does everything that the musician needs. It's really made for musicians. It ha handles composition. It handles scoring, it handles MIDI editing, it handles mastering. It's the one tool that actually covers all the bases for a producer in a studio environment. I'm, I'm here with my product specialist, Greg Ondo, who ha is the creator of many of the Steinberg videos. He is probably the best source of information for Cubase here in the United States. So we're really lucky to have him here to do uh, both the training for the students uh, during the day and then we have a public clinic event for the public at night. So we're really looking forward to showing the new product to everybody. Hi, I'm Greg Undo with Steinberg. We're here to take a quick look at some of the new exciting features found within Cubase 8. Uh, so Cubase Pro 8 was kind of the whole foundation software-wise was redone. So we see incredible amounts of efficiency. And with that, we wanted to couple it with really strong workflow enhancements. So if we kind of look at our project window here, what we could actually do is we have dockable windows. So if I wanted to see all my VST instruments or my media bay, and this would allow me to just uh, actually come over here. I could find all of my media files. So if I said, okay, I just wanted to take an audio file, I could just find any audio file and just drag and drop it directly into my project or plug in presets. So very, very fast and easy to work with that. Now we have people that work with lots of virtual instruments. So one of the things we want to do is to really simplify the whole render process. So if I come here, I could select multiple events on my project window that are audio or going to a virtual instrument. And I could just right click here and say render in place. And I could actually just do a quick setup so I could render these as separate events, as block events, one event. I could have it with dry, with only the inserts, channel strips, or with the send effects or the master effects. And now when I hit OK, it'll just simply take these files and take the individual files here. It'll mute the original segments. At this point, it's going to render them, place it directly below the existing events, and it'll even carry the color over. So this really kind of simplifies the whole process of rendering your different files intelligently and kind of having them directly within your system. So if you want to do this again for audio, for MIDI, virtual instrument tracks to free up your DSP resources and your RAM, it's no problem. It's just done that effortlessly. And if we undo it, just right there. Now, as we also wanted to do an extension on our popular chord track that was introduced with Cubase 7. So we've added the concept of chord pads because we realize that not everyone has a piano keyboard to work with. So if I wanted to come here, we could actually just set up our different chord pads that we can take a listen to. And if I wanted to just add a chord, we could define our chords here and do different tensions and voicings. Or I could just select my, say I have a C major chord, I could go between different tensions by clicking right there or different voicings of that chord. So the same exact chord, but just different voicings making it more interesting. And I could have chord voicings for piano or guitar players, because obviously those would be different. And what's really interesting is now you could just record these and hit these uh, directly uh, and record it as MIDI data. So if I wanted to come here, I could actually edit and you could set up different players. So you could have remote control options that you could activate. Or if you actually just wanted to see the pad layout in drum pads, we could actually just click right there and see all this. So even if you don't have a traditional MIDI keyboard, you can now even drag and drop MIDI parts directly onto a pad or have MIDI loops and be able to kind of actually play something that's keyboard based without a keyboard or if, even if you don't have the keyboard skills. Now we've also on the window side really kind of uh, stepped up kind of the window handling. So now everything works as a multi-document interface. So you can easily kind of tab back and forth. So it's working with all the contemporary operating systems. Uh, mixing has also been enhanced quite a bit. Um, so one of the additions that we wanted to do, and you can see we have multiple projects open simultaneously. One of the additions we wanted to do was just to add uh, a VCA fader. So I could take all my selected tracks directly here. And let's say if I have existing automation on them, I could take these tracks. I could just take all my drum tracks, for instance, here. 
And then I could add a VCA fader. So this will automatically just create my VCA fader. And now I can just adjust the VCA fader and all the automation will still remain intact, but keep proportional based on the VCA fader. So this way if you have existing information, very simple to work with right there with your VCA faders to kind of just boost or cut volumes accordingly. Now we've also introduced a whole new suite of plugins as well. So uh, kind of a whole theme of multiband plugins. So we have multiband compression, but usually the multiband plugins are the most CPU intensive and hence requiring the most latency. But here we have a latency free mode for live where we could have independent side chaining for each of the bands. So we're gonna have not only that, a multiband compressor, you're, uh, you could also have a multiband uh, envelope shaper, a multiband expander. So you can have lots of different multiband plugins. And again, uh, all with the kind of the live mode, we have a multiband fuzz that you can see directly here and a uh, brand new deesser plugin. So you can just easily kind of find the, the sibilant frequencies. And my favorite, my personal favorite is the VST bass amp where you could actually just choose between six different cabinet, six different amplifiers with matching cabinets to really emulate the classic sound that you'd expect from classic bass amps. So just really phenomenal uh, sound quality. Now, some of the other things that we wanted to make uh, significantly easier was the ability, because a lot of times when we see metering, we see metering directly for events that are happening currently, but we don't see meters that actually show you what's going to happen. And that's what our wave meters allow you to do. So if we come here, we can see all of our different meters and what's going to happen in our particular project. So you get a really good idea of what can happen in your project. And lastly, one of the innovative things that was introduced in Cubase 7, but it was a little hard to actually get going, was the concept of internet collaboration. So if you want to record someone online and they're not physically in the same room, you could go to VST Connect. And now it's literally just, I could click, you know, two mouse clicks, and then I could record anyone who's using VST Connect Performer, which is a free download for Mac or PC, or five dollars for your iPad on the app on uh, iTunes. And then you could just simply record that person directly into your timeline, free of charge for two tracks. So as you can see, Cubase 8 not only adds the performance optimizations, but lots of workflow enhancements for window management, being able to dock certain windows, being able to have your cord pads. Uh, to automatic kind of advanced rendering as people expect it with the mixing with VCA faders, new plugins, and internet collaboration makes for a very strong update. So if you really get a chance to check out Cubase Pro 8, you'll be very happy with it.